first episode of the Ask for Jake, the Art of Mental Wellbeing podcast. Um, I'm joined today by Trevor Gideon, um, who works with Chimp Management. Um, a little bit about Ask for Jake, if you've never heard about us before, we're a mental health charity based in Bournemouth of North Devon. Um, and we aim in training people to be safe from suicide, to be able to have safe communication for people that are feeling suicidal, as well as a range of different conversations going around mental health. Um, so for those of you who haven't met Trevor, he is part of the Chimp Management Programme, um, and he'll be here talking to us today about the spectrum of mental health, of mental well-being, sorry, um, and just open to general conversation involved around mental health. So, Trevor, you'd like to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm... Uh... Trevor Gideon. I'm a uh, consultant forensic psychiatrist. I work within the NHS um, and that part of my work um, is looking after uh, people with women with uh, serious mental illness and, and personality disorders um, in, in secure hospitals. Um, but I'm also a, a psychiatrist within the CHIMP management uh, team. Perfect. So some of the work you do with CHIMP management is, is based around the kind of spectrum of mental well-being. Be able to go into that a little bit further for us? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I, it, it might be useful to sort of just just go through kind of where where chimp management came from and where the, the chimp model came from. I, 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 you, you'll be familiar with the the chimp paradox. Yeah. Um, in yeah, fact, I've, I've, I've got, a, I've a, got a, a copy. Very, very here. Good book. Yeah, it's a very very good book. Um, so that was developed by um, Professor Steve Peters. So our our boss, um, Steve, was my uh, lecturer in medical school. Um, and I think what, what the model came out of this idea that lots and lots of people can present with various difficulties, can present in crisis, um, but actually don't need medication. That, that's not going to make a difference here. Um, they didn't sort of meet that threshold of a, of a diagnosis because it wasn't a diagnosis that they needed. It wasn't an illness that they had. It was more um, struggling with day-to-day -day difficulties which nonetheless led them to a point of crisis. Um, so Steve took his understanding of, of mental health, psychiatry, neurology, and neuroscience, and developed what is a, a, an easily accessible um, model of understanding uh, how the brain works, how the mind works, but also looking at ways to um, support that, to get people from either a point of crisis to a point of well-being, or, or beyond that, from um, a point of crisis to a point of, of flourishing. Um, and the models had, 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 had great success with, with individuals. It's um, gained notoriety within um, professional sports, um, but we've now got a full team and we work with schools, we work with individuals, we work in the public sector with corporate organisations. So um, we're, we're out and about really, yeah. That's lovely. Um, so in, in terms of the kind of spectrum itself, does everyone fall on the spectrum or is it almost sometimes a, a case by case scenario as such? Um, or is it just something that everyone can kind of see themselves on and see the kind of steps to improvement as such? I mean, my my view, and I had, I had this sort of before even my work with chip management, and um, I see this even in, in my work in, um, in the NHS, is that if you imagine a spectrum of, of going, going sort of left to right, on one side, you've got people who are mentally well with no illness at all so they don't have a diagnosis of depression or schizophrenia or, or, or anything like that and at the other other side of that spectrum you have the extremes of mental well-being which are people with those diagnoses who are um, you know in, in a very serious way um, I think that we all reside somewhere on that spectrum um, and that can be influenced by circumstances going on in your life in that moment of time different stresses that you face genetics, um, uh, other things that are going on. And because of that, it actually fluctuates over a period of time. At the same time, I think there's a spectrum kind of going the other way, if you like. So yeah. if you imagine kind of top to bottom, you can have people who are functioning really well, right at the bottom. Or you can have people who are in absolute crisis, absolute crisis point. And if you put those sort of two bits together, you can have somebody, for example, who has a diagnosis of schizophrenia, for example, but actually it's functioning really well. They've got things together well in their life. You know, they've got a good support network. They talk regularly. They've got, you know, no particular financial concerns. They might be functioning really well, mm -hmm. but they could equally be at a point of crisis. Yeah. And I think 
that could also apply to the people who, who don't have a, a diagnosed mental illness, but actually put strain and pressure in, in, in life, day-to-day -day stresses, um, you can quite, quite soon find yourself at a point of crisis. Yeah, so it's, it's kind of uh, an example as such as to, if you plot X and Y, you can, you can see most people on that, on that spectrum um, in terms of like mental well-being and, and also mental health in there. Um, kind of in terms of the, the chimp method and things like that, what, is there a classification between mental well-being and mental health as such? We, we don't we, we talk about dysfunction and malfunction but so at the point when somebody's got a, a mental illness you can see neurological changes in the brain you can see biochemistry in the brain all changing um, and even the structure of the brain can look very different um, but actually I, you know you, you can put people under we know full well that actually if you put people under significant strains or pressures actually again that biochemistry starts changing um, and that, I think, I think the real challenge in, in, in this day and age is actually that, that there are lots of things in society around us that are increasing some of those strains and increasing some of those pressures. Um, you know, we don't have to look too far in, in terms of the pandemic and, and the sort of stresses that that's placing people under um, and the impact then that that has on, on mental well-being. Yeah, it's, it is a very tough time for a lot of people. Um, and I speak about young people a lot in terms of the mental health crisis and things like that. But I think generally across the board with such a you know, time of uncertainty and stress for a lot of people, um, mental health is rising. And it's, a, it's an issue that I think will consistently rise in the future as well. And in, in terms of something I do believe needs to be done now, um, you know, to kind of stop this kind of evolving into something that, you know, you can cross the line and you can't come back from for a lot of people. Um, you know, the, the stress of the, the housing market, people losing their jobs consistently because of, you know, I don't want to say faffed around by lockdown, but it's not been a, a clear A and B for a lot of people. And, and that brings a lot of stress to them. You know, even furlough, for example, as well, is a great an idea as it was for people. It's, yeah. it's just a, a point of strain for a lot of people. Um, and the kind of work that I'm hoping to do in, in the kind of future of the charity and things like that is to kind of unblur as such those, those two words, mental well-being and mental health. Um, cause I think that's very important for a lot of people is that, yes, sometimes you can have bad days or mm -hmm. which you don't feel so great, but, you know, you need to find where you are on that kind of spectrum as such. Um, and that can kind of not just only change your mind frame, I think it can change your outlook a lot of the time. Um, is that sometimes a lot of people, all they need is direction, for example, um, of, of where to go or, or signposts and for things that they can do as such. Um, and one of the things I'm hoping to do is just to make that a little clearer for them, you know, un unmuddy the water so they can see maybe a light at the end of the tunnel or, you know, the next step that they need to take. And I think that's, that's very important in terms of mental health is that a lot of people don't know what to do next. Um, and I think, you know, helping unblur the, blur those two kind of scary words as such is, is, is going to help them and distinguish them for a lot of people as well. Um, because being mentally unwell doesn't mean you have a, a mental illness um you know and it's, it's those steps to how to take care of yourself and and everything that goes in between all that that you know we're hoping it is part of the ask for jake charity that we can do to as i say unmuddy those waters but there are a lot of steps in between it's it's, it's going to be a tough road but hopefully you know we will we will get to the point where like me and you now we can sit down and have those kind of casual conversations evolving around mental health um, I, I really agree. I think that's exactly what's needed. More and more, just just conversation about mental health as a, as a whole. Um, a, a slight bugbear for, uh, of mine is, you know, the, the idea of mental health as being seen as as only illness. Um, and I think the work actually needs to start, um, you know, much earlier on. It needs to start sort of before the point of crisis. Um, in terms of the you know the, the 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 way that the sort of chimp model would would look at things is if if I was to ask you, Ross, to just think about two people, okay? Mm -hmm. Think about person A and person B, and imagine that person A is is stable and secure. Imagine that person A can take perspective on life, can deal with shades of grey, and in all a person A's decision making, logic comes in first. 
Yeah. Then imagine person B, somebody who's unstable, somebody who's insecure, somebody who sees the world in black and whites and decision making is led by emotions first. Which of those two people is going to succeed? More okay. likely to succeed? Person A. Person A, absolutely. And that's without me telling you what the task is. Yeah. So which of those two people is more likely to get through get through financial difficulties? Again, person A. Or, or get through a relationship breakdown or physical yeah. illness difficulties or um, just more and more, more and more emotional burdens. It's going to be person A. Um, and I think we need to we need to realize actually nobody is all person B and nobody is all person A. We've all, I'll put my hand up to that. We've all got a bit of person A in us and a bit of person yeah. B in us, you know? Yeah. The work is very much, I think, and, and, and certainly what we advocate at Chimp is, is actually recognizing that we've got those two parts within us. So how do we support, support person B within us? Yeah but also allow person A to kind of flourish. Yeah. Um, and that, that's very much what the, what the model's all about. Yeah, I, I think that kind of, that again just falls into the conversations that, you know, everyone sees mental health or the stigma around mental health, should I say, in fact, is person B. Um, you know, is it, if you, again, if you were to list these two people up and, and list everything that they were doing, things like that, you know, who's mentally ill? You can ask that, pose that question out. And I think most people, if not all people, will lean towards person B. Um, but it's the, it's the kind of illness, and it is an illness, that has no visible symptoms. You know, it's, it's, it's the kind of thing is that if you see 50 people walking down the street, are you going to be able to actively say that I know every single person down there that has a mental health issue? No, you're not. Um, and it's only through talking, which is, you know, the only thing that we can do for, for, for people with, with, with mental health as such is, is kind of regular people is, you know, checking on your friends, checking your loved ones, uh, checking on the people you've not heard from in a while. Um, is that's the only way that we can kind of stop this illness becoming such a pandemic, mm -hmm. um, you know, because it is, it is an illness that suffers in silence. It's sometimes, you know, as stereotypical as it sounds, it's something that suffers in the shadows because there aren't these kind of open lines of communication to be had for people with mental health issues, because there is still such a great stigma around it. Um, is that it's, it's especially in men, and I know it's talked about a lot of men, but men are stubborn. They are very stubborn, you know? Feelings will never be spoke about as, as freely as we hope them to, but that's not, where our, what, not what we're asking for, is that we're asking them to not save their own lives, but be part of the journey of which that they can then get to better mental well-being is that by opening those lines of communication, you stop sometimes that person feeling like there's no other way out. Yeah. I think is the, 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 the case for a, a lot of men that do, do commit suicide is that, you know, for some of them, there's never that light at the end of the tunnel. Or there's never that, you know, kind of next step that they can take. They get stuck in, stuck in some kind of rut. Um, and it's all because, you know, sometimes they don't know what else to do. And hopefully by opening those lines of communication through signposting and things like that, you're going to be able to help and direct those people to the help that they need, um, which, you know, will save lives. And, you know, as, as lovely as that sounds, it's, it's so underestimated for, for, for a lot of people is that, you know, how can simply talk and help? You would be amazed at how much a conversation can do for your mental health. You know, Absolutely. I mean, we, we, we look at, certainly within, within Chimp, the way we look at things is that you've got sort of three separate, systems at play you've got your sort of chimp part of your brain which is kind of evolutionarily from an evolutionary point of view has been with you sort of since the jungle it's all about safety and preservation of self um and and survival of the species it's, it's kind of very focused on that it's very powerful and it's a very strong part of you um and that part can be a bit more black and white and thinking because it has to be all or nothing it can be it communicates through emotions. It can be a bit, um, a bit of a catastrophizing sort of part and a bit of an, a paranoid part, but it's all about keeping slightly on edge. But part of that, the reason, the, the, the fact that we've got that part of our brain um, working in such a way, in some ways actually explains some of those things that you just mentioned. So the barriers to 
the barriers to coming forward and seeking support or seeking care that's because you, you, you the chimp part of your brain just just won't let you because it's trying to preserve itself it's too it'll be concerned about shame it'll be frightened of what could happen about the unknown of what could happen um, and that that can be such a powerful part of our brain that actually we then don't start having the conversations no but on the flip side it's actually the, the, the way we kind of one of the ways that we try and help and support and manage that part of our chimp uh, of our brain that, that chimp part is actually we talk about exercising your chimp and actually getting things off your chest almost yeah. and letting all those concerns sort of come out um that, that's when, when people say you know just you, you, it's good to talk and you must talk and there's, there's been lots of um initiatives and drivers to sort of encourage people to talk more um that's actually because it allows that that chimp part of you to start offloading completely yeah um and get some of those really at times really irrational um and, and very emotive thoughts out on the table because if they're stuck in there actually our human part our more logic first part of our brain our you know the real us the part of us that can take perspective on board and and can sort of do things in a stepwise process way that doesn't even get a look in it can't come out that part of us because i really do believe that people have that conflict inside them between their chimp and their human particularly when they're struggling yeah. perhaps even particularly when they are having suicidal thoughts yeah this tension between i can't see any way out of this the only option i've got is to, to take my life that's yeah. very much emotion first chimp thinking that yeah. can't really see perspective as compared with your human which might be saying well there's a way out of this. We need to go and get this support. If we talk about it, it might help. There's the real tension there. So what we try and do is actually help people manage that chimp part so that that human part can come out and start saying the sensible, logical thing to do here is to go and speak to somebody. All the while though, your chimp's going to be screaming yeah. saying, we can't do that because yeah. everyone will gossip about us. Everyone will, everyone will, everyone will know my business. Yeah. What will people think? I might lose my job. I might get sectioned. All of that type of thinking comes out. It's, it's very ironic, though, isn't it, is that the, the part of the brain that is, you know, kind of central for self-preservation can be the part of the brain that also kind of leads to the end cause, which is which is suicide for, for some people. Is that, you know, that part of the brain that is telling you that, you know, if you go speak to people, people will find out, you know, the embarrassment that will come of that and, and everything like that kind of ends up you know, maybe for no fault of its own, kind of ends up at that point where, you know, suicide can be the only option for some people. And that's, I think, the conversation that we need to, to start having is that it's not your only way out, you know, and, and I think the greatest support network is, you know, as much amazing work as these charities do for kind of talk and, and support and things like that, is the people that you've already got around you. Um, because these people love you, you know, and, and everything like that, and they care about you. And, you don't have to suffer in silence i can i can put my hand up and say my friends know probably every embarrassing um moment that i've ever had on nights out or with women or anything like that they know they know everything uh, <laughs> in there or for me telling them um but i always i always kind of find it bamboozling is that those situations that you know from an onlooker looking at is going to be far more embarrassing than for you to talk to your friends about you know, a dark day that you're having or a dark month that you're having. It was always kind of, it didn't ever make sense to me is that the dumb things I've done on nights out that are seen very more harshly by other onlookers yeah. um, are more spoken about than maybe a dark day that I'm having or, you know, like I say, a, a dark patch in my life that I, you know, I, I need support for. And it just seems outstanding to me and, and crazy to me is that, you know, the conversations aren't already being had. Um, you know, because it is such an issue now with, you know, with such um, awareness that those conversations haven't already started happening. But I can, as someone who's, you know, lived through through um, a family member committing suicide, I can completely um, understand why you would not. Um, you know, to give a little bit of, of context to my brother, for people who know him, he was he was still going to work. He was still visiting friends in Wales. Um, he was still, you know, going playing football with his friends, for example, and. You know, again, you know, it was it was a conversation I have with the, the person involved in Jake's inquest into his death. And 
Um, he said that some of the nurses that had seen him and, and doctors, and again, this is this is not a, a slight on the doctors or anything like that, is that Jake couldn't be depressed because he was still going to work. Um, and one of the things that I kind of look back on now and, and kind of realised from that is that I can I can count four separate instances since then of of people I know and people that I'm aware of in the community still going out to work day in day out and then one day just you know, just, just taking their own life. I think mental health issues are evolving sometimes faster than the professionals themselves can realise, which is why it's so much more important that you do have these kind of open conversations with people is that, you know, what's mentally ill to you right now is, is kind of sad as it, as it is, might not class as a mental health issue currently, mm-hmm. you know, because especially with how much they're evolving with lockdown and kind of quarantine and things like that and kind of shutting down the country, is that these these things are changing? Is that you know you're not allowed to go outside now, as as, as where you normally would, and, and and things like that. So the communication that you have between your your friends and your colleagues and your peers and your parents or or other family or whatever is is you know kind of opening that first line of dialogue. They're not going to be ashamed. They're not going to be embarrassed, or you know they're not going to be gossiping around you over the next mum's coffee morning. People want you to be well. People want you to be healthy. And, you know, I think that's the kind of first step is to helping yourself is to just talk. I, I, I couldn't agree more. And I think that's a really, really nice point there that actually just reminding yourself and, um, and, and reminding your chimp that actually people want you to be well. Yeah. Um, I think it would, I think that the sort of thing against that or the, the sort of drivers against that and the, uh, we talk we talk about stigma as if it's 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 stigma in the media i think the stigma is actually far deeper rooted than that and yeah. um from from sort of our younger years you know we 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 learn very quickly to sort of keep quiet and not talk about things yeah. um or have have it, it just gets perpetuated and perpetuated yeah. so it's very it really does need an active push back against it um yeah. by all of us not not leaving that burden to the person who is struggling, but actually by all of us to talk yeah. about our, our our mental health. Um, and I, there, there is so much to be gained um, from talking about it, um, yeah. particularly with those who, you know, you, your loved ones, you can trust them. Yeah. Um, we, we, we talk a lot about some of the basic things that, so if you've got it, if you, you know, we've all, we've all got this chimp part in us and, and, and that will, run amok and do its own thing but there are some so we're gonna have to work with it we're gonna have to find ways to sort of work alongside this part of our brain which is very different and one of those ways of looking after it is is actually to realize that chimps and and by that we've all got chimps so all of us need people we need a troop um because that makes us feel safe it makes us feel secure um and that's why you know the, the talking about things can really help because you're, you're making the most and you're exploiting the, 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 the love from those around you. Um, I appreciate that can be really difficult though for people who, are, who don't have many people in their life and there are, and we, we, we know that um, rates of, of, well, mental well-being as a whole, but also rates of um, self-harm and, and, and completed suicide are, are greater in, in people who are isolated. Um, and I, I you know, we've, we've spoken before and I've, I've seen through your website, there are, there are lots of other avenues of support which, which might provide that kind of, that, that kind of step in troop, if you like, yeah. um, to support people who are, who are really struggling. Yeah, in, in such an, an instant world as well with, you know, kind of messaging, text messaging, phone calls and, you know, kind of even online and, and things like that through, through game and things like that, um, it takes sometimes, you know, maybe 30 seconds, if not less, to kind of reach out, send a message. And, you know, it is such a non-judgmental um, service that a lot of these people are offering, um, including ourselves, is that, you know, at the, I just, I fathom it to be crazy that, you know, there is such a judgment to be held from, by people, whether it's in the mental health industry or, or, or your friends or things like that, for, for such an issue that is so... I think as a, as a baseline level, so, you know, kind of stoppable, um, you know, with, with the, with the mental health pandemic is that, you know, it, it takes 10 seconds, 20 seconds to reach out to a friend and, you know, if you do that and it, people always ask me all the time, what is one thing I can start doing, um, you know, 
kind of help the mental health issue, whether it's, you know, a lot of the times they say, oh, what kind of careers can I go into? What kind of, you know, what can I do on the website or what can I do for you as, you know, like a, a volunteer? And I kind of, I like to stop and tell them and say, you know, the best thing that you can honestly do right now, and it is something that can be done right now, is if you send a message out, if you make that phone call, send that text message to, to maybe a friend you've not heard from in a while or a friend that's not been present as much in a while, or just generally people that you are engage with friends, colleagues, whatever like that, just to check in and make sure they're okay. You know, that is the, the first thing, that, the easiest thing that you can do for, for, for people with, with mental illness and things like that. It's sometimes I think people, people themselves that are looking to help sometimes have a slightly warped view as well is that, you know, that, you know, they're going to be going in one day and they're, they're going to be telling people everything's okay. And, you know, kind of patting them on the head as such when the first thing that you can do, and I've, you know, I'll say it again, is the first thing that you can do is, open that line of dialogue with people that maybe you haven't spoken to in a while or people you do regularly speak to. Absolutely. Know that, you know, you are there for them, but as well as that you are open to be spoken to about this. Um, Absolutely. I think that's that's the first thing that you can do. For me, I mean, so all all kind of my medical training to one side, all the medical interventions and therapies and medication that can be given, the, the single most effective thing that I do for any person, I think the single most effective intervention that I can ever provide for anybody is just talking. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's something that no one can have an excuse currently not to do. And, you know, it's, it's something that is so easy and so readily available to a lot of people now is that, you know, we all sit here with phones in our pockets or laptops with us or, or anything like that, that have the, the kind of means to send a message to anyone across the world within seconds. Mm-hmm. this is the the first step that everyone can be taking to kind of help solve this mental health crisis that mm-hmm. we're in, is by opening those lines of dialogue to be had with friends and family and things like that to make sure that they know that again you know that you are open to be spoken about or spoken to about these issues but as well even if that person who reaches out to you isn't the person that you completely want to talk to is that there are people out there that are open to having these conversations again as well is yeah. you know at the end of the day, and you know, I'll say it again, um, people want you to be well, people want you to be alive. Um, you know, they want you to be well and everyone has dark days, everyone has dark thoughts and, and patches in their life where you know, they might not be, you know, on the luck or on the money or whatever. But people at the end of the day want you to still be here, you know, because there is a lot of things like giving this world to have a day back with my brother or a week back with my brother, you know, the yeah. holiday we had to Spain. You know, I'd, I'd sacrifice many years of my life to come to have that week back with him. Um, you know, and it's a lot easier to still be here than it is for me to give those years back um, or to, to give those years away to have them back, should I say. Um, people want you to still be here. And by reaching out and helping people, you've opened that dialogue to make sure whether they might not be ready now. You know, And, and that, that, that one bit of communication we, we, could be life-changing life-saving you know they, they might not be ready now it might not be a conversation they're ready to have now but push by opening that line you have yeah. them aware that you are available to talk to if they need them or if they need you and that's you know the kind of one thing that everyone should start doing um there's kind of no excuse not to be checking in for people um especially when you're not allowed to see them you're not allowed to visit them or anything like that not until the third anyway so, it's just having that open line of conversation that they know that you are there when you need them, when they need you. Um, it's just the first thing that you, that everyone that's either watching this, listening to this can, can be doing. Completely agree. I think, yeah, the, there's, there's a lot sort of said about the, the negative impacts, I suppose, that technology and, and social media and all of that can have in terms of mental health, but, but there is every scope to sort of turn that on its head. Um, and I think, you know, again, as we've spoken, I think sort of having conversations like this um, uh, and sort of, you know, using this as a bit of a platform as well is, 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 a, is a really good thing to do as it's, it's a positive use of technology. Um, yeah. with, with, hopefully with the work that I'm, I'm looking to set out and do with, with the podcast, um, but to give a little bit of context, I know we're almost half an hour in for anyone who's listened that doesn't actually know what this podcast is about. Um, the for, aim for this, this podcast is for 
to have and engage in those open conversations with people like Trevor himself in the kind of medical professional industry with, with chimp management, um, people within kind of my local community and things like that that have, that have done well, um, that have done positive things. As well, I've got some authors booked, um, you know, some kind of people within the mental health industry itself as volunteers and things like that. And again, it's just about having those open conversations to mental health that kind of help people realise that this is a conversation that can be casually happened, you know, like the news or the sport or anything like that, but mental health can be one of those conversations that, you know, you don't have to have in a quiet room and whisper in case people hear. But if you, if you want to, you can stand on the pub table and shout it to, to everyone that, to let them know that, you know, mental health is here and it's, it's an issue that we need to solve. Um, and by taking it out of the shadows and into the sunlight, I think is the, the, one of the most positive things that we can do um, for for mental health is just to let people know that these conversations are now socially acceptable um whereas they may not have been before but they they now are uh, people aren't going to you know frown and, and turn an eyebrow over at the fact that you're talking about a day where you weren't so well or the thoughts you might be having people again want you to be well and you know kind of conversation is the key to that absolutely absolutely agree i think um Again, I think, you know, it's about recognising that we've all got a little bit of this within us, you know, and um, the, the very much sort of our approach is to appreciate that, that nobody's all nobody's all bad, nobody's all good. You know, we've actually got the systems inside our brain and, and the, the first step is getting away from that assumption that if you want to be well, you can be well. Yeah, We've got to get away from that. We've got to recognise that we have got two competing or two competing interests in our brain this human and this chimp and actually having insight into saying well i'm, I'm not 100 in control at the moment my chimp is running wild and is thinking that things are going to go terribly wrong and it's making me think that the only way out of this is to harm myself or to take my life yeah. if we can start recognizing that that's okay it's okay we can start talking about that in a safe non-threatening way how can we look after you how can we support you to support yourself those are the those are the building blocks yeah i think it, i think it's also important to recognize as well as that having a mental illness is is okay uh, yeah. i think a lot of the media in hollywood haven't helped in the sense that you know if you're not mentally well you're going to be throwing the straight jacket into a padded room for for the rest of your life and, and force fed medicines when in fact that couldn't be further from the case um you know it's it's a horrible thought isn't it is that you know if, if you're in a place where you don't feel so well or so strong or you know, that there's people that are going to come grab you with a net from the garden and, you know, throw you into this padded pool. It's, it's couldn't be further from that. Um, you know, it's, it's okay to not be mentally well. It, it, it yes. is. I think it's, it's a statistic now. I think it's something about 30% of, of boys under 18 will, will suffer from a mental health issue. That's, that's one in three people, you know. Yeah. For people that are listening, if you look at, take two other friends of yours and one of you, unfortunately, may have a mental health issue. It's not an issue. It's, you know, it's, it's something that can be completely looked after um, at the end of the day. A, a lot of people with mental illnesses are, are now well. I, one of the ladies that has been kind of most influential to me is a, is a lady named uh, Marie Ash. She, might, she probably will watch this, so hello, Marie. Um, a number of years ago, I'm, I'm sure she won't mind me saying, she was, she was very suicidal. Um, she now works, in fact, in the, in the ward that she was a patient of. Um, as a peer support worker and you know that's Marie was was very down and out um, you know very at risk to herself um, but the work she is doing now is is inspirational um, you know she's been one of the kind of key factors into the work that I'm looking to do in the future um, and even the work I'm doing now she is an amazing lady um, you know to turn your life around like that um, from being a patient on the ward to now working in the ward as a peer support worker um, you know, is, is an unbelievable turnaround. And I think you hear enough about the success stories of, of mental health. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, is it, is it is a disease, an illness that can be dealt with. Um, I don't think it can ever be cured, but that's not to say it can't be dealt with. Um, you know, it's people still do have dark days and things like that, but it's how you kind of control and manage that, especially that chimp part of your brain. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a completely illness now that can be managed. Um, yeah rather than you having to spiral out of control. Um, but Marie is, is an absolute inspiration to me. I know she's an absolute inspiration to a lot of people. So 
um, yeah, she's, she does amazing work, especially with the charity now that with it as well and, and the work that she does with that as well. I don't, she must have 25 hours in a day compared to everyone else. I don't know how she gets to so many different places, um, you know, and, and everything like that. But no, she, she's, she's, she's a lovely lady. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's something now that is, you know, with, with support and communication and things like that is something that now can be, can be dealt with and can be managed. It's not, you know, I think it very much is, as you say yeah. about, about managing it and, Again, if, if we if we if we look at these different competing parts of our brain, we're never going to get rid of one of them. It's about managing it, and I think if we the, the ideal situation, and certainly some of the work that, that we do, is very much working with people at a, a young age and encourage people to look after their mental well-being on a daily basis. Whether you are functioning really well or in crisis, actually, if we start looking after ourselves on a daily basis again our chances of success are much improved we can start laying down that kind of our own safety net if you like we can understand what the different parts of our brain are doing and recognize actually this is a situation that's likely to be challenging for me yeah i can plan in advance so things don't need to get to a crisis point um and and, and that applies whether whether people are you know have a mental illness or or, or not um I think one of the things I'm just going to go back to if it, it was about some of the reasons why people don't always present in a sort of typical way. Um, I think there's something about an expectation, I suppose, and I can I, I say this for professionals as well that somebody who's like you know who's a high risk of suicide is somebody who is not doing much and is kind of in bed all the time and. We have to remember, I think, that everyone's really individual. The other thing to keep in mind is that if you think about, if you, if you consider that, you know, your chimp is the first person kind of running the show most of the time and really doesn't want to be found out, doesn't yeah. want to be sort of identified as being unwell um, or is just trying to find distractions and ways of coping. Yeah. It might be working extra hard. It might try and sort of pull the wool over everyone's yeah. eyes, but actually underneath the surface, really struggling. Yeah. Um, but just being so boundary and so barriered to that. And you, you can see people get to a point where it just overspills. You know, they've been yeah. holding it in for months and months and months. And that holding it in is actually their chimp kind of just trying to hold yeah. it all in, hold it all together instead of, as we've said, going and talking about it and trying to kind of, um, you know, let, let, this, let off steam a little bit. So that can be one of the, one of the real yeah. barriers. That, that was really the kind of recognize. One of the things I, I wrote in, in one of my articles um, was that how the kind of mental health is evolving um, with all the awareness that's being spread about is that, you know, I think you could stop most people on the street and ask them what's the kind of signs of, of someone who's mentally not well. And it all kind of present the same thing, you know, staying in bed, unsociable, um, you know, distant, um, self-isolating, things like that. There's, there's all those kind of symptoms. And I think for for a lot of people, because it is such a closeted issue at the moment, is that they're evolving the actual symptoms themselves to not be discovered, um, which is again kind of falls back to what I was saying about kind of Jake going to work and the people, other people that are taking their lives and still went to work is that they don't, that chimp doesn't want to be found out. And it, it's kind of evolved to realize is that if you do this thing, either thing A, stay in bed, whatever, people are going to find us out. So we need to start going back to work. We need to start kind of engaging again with, with people and things like that to kind of put a blanket, uh, put the wool over the, the, yeah. the parties as such. And, you know, it's, it, it's, a, it's a sad time, um, I think, when an illness itself actually evolved to not be discovered. Um, and it's, you know, like all illnesses do, to be fair, they do kind of evolve to self-preservation again. They, they evolve to kind of stay alive and things like that. But again, when, that, when you are on that kind of crisis point and, and things like that, is that sometimes you don't have the ability to reach out when you do just need a helping hand, um, which again falls back to the conversation of kind of reach out to people. And, you know, that's the kind of key topic of this conversation here. Um, but I think, I think as well, it's, it's a lot of pressure by the kind of media to have these certain life goals, I think as well, which you see a lot of articles, 100 things to do before you're 29, you know, before that big flashy 3-0 comes about, you know, and, and things like that. And, I think for a lot of people, it's a lot of people look too far down that line. Um, one of the things I learned when I when I attended a few Alcoholics Anonymous meetings, um, it's a little card they give you. It's a very helpful card. It's 
I might get it in a second, I think it's in my wallet. It's look at everything day by day. You know, I'll put it in terms of, of alcohol and, and drinks, you know. Can I hold off for five minutes for that drink? Well, then that five minutes, you can do that again for five minutes and five minutes more or day by day. What can I do in this hour that can make me a better person or, you know, not make me relapse or anything like that? It's looking at it day by day. Whereas if you set your targets to say, oh, it's my birthday in January, I want to be mentally well and have the best time I can. And quite frankly, it's going to be detrimental to you because, you know, you're looking at it as a too broad of a picture. You need to be looking at what you can do for yourself today, whether that is tidy the room or, you know, go out and get the fresh air or go for a 15 minute walk. It's what can I do to feel the best I can today? Because tomorrow you might not want to, and that's, that's perfectly fine. You know, or the day after you might not want to, but you've got to look at it on a day by day basis and ask yourself, what can I do to be the best person I can today? And that best person may not be the same as being the best person as you could be yesterday. That's completely fine. Again, as long as you are able to do your best for that day, then I think it can, it can go in, a, in the broad spectrum of helping you along because those days turn into weeks and those weeks turn into months. And then before you know it, you know, I don't want to say you're going to be a better person, but you're going to have a different outlook on things as well as whether, you know, am I going to be able to afford this car in six months time? I'll be able to go on this holiday the holiday of a lifetime before 29 you know so you can see you can see where the chimp will start catastrophizing there yeah you know we talk a lot about the here and now because um remember your chimp hasn't got that 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 no. ability to look no. in terms of perspective if you try and say you know even if if, if, if if you think about um if you take exercise as, an, as, a, as a sort of an example of this right you know you can get really excited and you can think about oh yeah i'm gonna have i'm gonna have a six pack by the summer yeah. Um, it, it's never achieved, is it? You get really excited, and then you kind no, of I, I fall away. The last you know I mean? the chimps family. all on board, yeah. but it just never really sticks to it. Whereas actually, if you make things into attainable chunks, you know, let's yeah. just focus on today's um, exercise. Actually, that, that's a, that's I can go and do that now if yeah. I'm minded to. But you can go and do that now. It goes exactly the same in terms of mental well-being. Yeah. Try and set yourself a goal for months in advance. It, your chimp will start saying, "Well, what's one day?" Yeah, and you just never achieve it. You never get off the starting line. Whereas if you say, "Well, I'm going to go for a walk now," yeah, far more achievable. Yeah, I, I, I can count the last two family holidays. I've said that I'm going to go and get a six pack for. <laughs> Quite frankly, I am. Um, I think the furthest I've ever been from a <laughs> Um, You know, lockdown hasn't been you know too kind to my. Hasn't been kind, does it? No, no. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's it's exactly right. If if I was to take it day by day, you know, if I went to the gym today, I'd you know. I'd be a lot further to getting closer to getting that six pack than I would be right now. Um, you know, if you take it day by day, because again, I think what you say is the kind of key to it. What's one more day, you know, in the grand scheme of when you're looking things over 90 days, you know, for three months, for example, one day is close to 1% of the time that you've got to complete this. Whereas if you look at it day by day, your, your minutes and your hours are dwindling, you know, by the second, um, you know, so looking at it as an approach for day by day, Kind of change your outlook on on how achievable that goal is because far less daunting, far less yeah. daunting, far more achievable. Um, that that that's a you know a, a really sort of positive way to, to sort of progress forward with something. And uh, you know I, I did I didn't make that that analogy of comparison. I didn't make that by um, un, unintentionally. Mm-hmm. I really think when it comes to mental well being, we should almost look at it in the same way as as, as sort of you know going to the gym and physical mm-hmm. fitness. Because we take care of, we know there's so much drive to take care of ourselves from that point of view. Why don't we take care of ourselves yeah. in terms of our mental fitness more? Yeah. The, the, the physical fitness is something that, you know, people always tell you about. But I think a lot of the key to that is, I know it sounds very stereotypical, but, you know, I'm kind of mentally well as well. Um, you know, that I don't need to look after myself because I'm mentally well. But I think there's some kind of agreement in that. I think that a lot of, a lot of happiness can come from, um, itself by being kind of mentally well and how you take care of yourself mentally. Um, because if you're happy with, you know, I think it, it, it boils down to kind of pressures of social media a lot of the times, you know, it's, I know we've just said how good it is, but there is, there is a flip side to it is that you are now connected with every single person around the globe. And I think a lot of pressure for, for people of, of kind of a younger generation that, you know, I, when I grew up and it wasn't that long ago, it was only six years ago, for example, I was 16. Um, I didn't have the kind of 
freedom of the kind of internet available as in such demand that they've got it today or, or, or kids today for example and my brother's a prime example he has got every friend he could ever need at his fingertips for an xbox controller you know and a headset so he doesn't need to go out and socialize as well as we may have needed to with you know that, that kind of scope of technology as such um i just think it puts a lot more pressure on people than they they, they really need um, to kind of look a certain way or act a certain way or dress a certain way. Um, and I think at the end of the day, that the one kind of bit of advice that kind of keeps me well every day is that, you know, I am happy how I am. And I'm an individual. You know, it's why, why look to the crowd for inspiration when you can look to yourself for inspiration? Um, mm. You know, it's, it's, again, just part of that day by day thing. You know, if, if you know that you're making the best decisions you can day by day, you look back as those weeks have turned to months and those months have turned to years, a lot happier than you would be setting goals for the, for the considerable future where that time does kind of slip away from you very quickly. Cause you now you can only look how fast kind of 2020 has gone. You know, we went down a lot in March, you know, and it's now almost December. Um, that doesn't feel like I, however many months, I think eight months to me, nine months to me. It, it, and, I, and I guess there's, there's nothing wrong with kind of setting longer term goals, but it's, it's got to uh, be broken down, doesn't it? It's got, you, you've got to think about, okay, well, Fine. To, to sort of go back to my my uh, <laughs> my ever, ever everlasting search for a six pack, um, you know, it's no, there's nothing <laughs> wrong with kind of setting that that goal for the distance. But you've got to think about well, what that fine, that's great, that's the dream, that's where we're hoping to be. But right now, what do I need to do for this first step? Yeah. Um, that's something that your chimp can get on board with because it's doable, but also you can start planning that type of thing with from a human point of view. You know, you're never going to get the six pack tomorrow. That's not going to happen. But the process to get to that longer term goal is get on the treadmill yeah. for 20 minutes or whatever. Yeah. Human can plan that logical, sensible, yeah. stepwise with a longer term perspective. Um, and the same goes for, for, for mental well-being, you know. I think I think it's just a, it's the the important part of having that plan and mm. you know because i think that's that's what a lot of people don't factor in into making goals or making kind of month-long like kind of commitments or anything like that is that there's a start and the end and everything in between just kind of a, a muddled foggy mess <laughs> is that, you know how do i how do i go about achieving this you know there's if i wanted to be president how, what are the steps i've got to go in between to, to do that yeah. um you know of course being american is one of them so i can't i can't be the president but <laughs> You know, it's, I don't think a lot of people look at those, those steps in between, those, the smaller steps. You know, it's, you look at the mountain as a whole, or do you look at the mountain as the individual step that you're taking right now and that little journey that you're on? Um, you know, it's without making those kind of day by day steps or those even month by month steps to put it at a slightly longer perspective, you know, that chimp in your mind is never going to be able to tell you mm -hmm. that it's going to work. You know, I wonder if I'm. Um looking you know applying almost the same to i don't know if there's people listening who'll be thinking well what can i do to help other people mm. again it can seem like a really daunting task when you look at it as i want to help you know i, I just want to help people that's a huge aim that's a huge task yeah. but we've touched upon it already if you you know your, your chimp won't get on board with that it won't be able to see it will see that as a really unknowing task. It will start thinking, well, I need to go and get training for this. I need to go in this course to do that. I need to yeah. get experience here, there and everywhere. Whereas, as we were saying, the smaller step within that, the first thing that is actually, if we think about it from a human point of view, entirely within your grasp right here and now, that first small chunk is maybe just picking up the phone and checking in with someone. Yeah. That's, then, then, you know, that's, that's a step to, in that right direction. Yeah. Again, it's, it's, it's just all about being the best person you can be today. You know, that message from someone that, you know, can wait till after dinner or, you know, wait till tomorrow, sometimes can't. You know, you've just got to look at it in that situation and say, am I being the best person I can be right now by sometimes putting that thing off or, you know, waiting to do that tomorrow? It's just that those small little steps turn into big steps very quickly. Yeah. The big steps are a lot harder to take without any small steps in between. Um, you know, it's it's... My dad used to put it perfectly to me when I was when I was young, going on walks and things like that. Is count the hundred, the first hundred steps you've taken, and see how far you've come. You know, I like that. long walks where I wouldn't want to go on with the dogs, whatever, down the beach. Yeah. But he says, you know, count the hundred steps. Hundred isn't that big a number. You know, count the hundred steps first and see the distance that you've come. 
you know, and do it again, and then do it again. And when you break tasks down into small, manageable mm-hmm. tasks, you know, it's a lot easier for me to ask you to walk 100 steps than it is to walk, ask you to walk two miles. If you just break it down into those small little tasks, the whole task itself becomes a lot more obtainable mm. and a lot more maintainable as well. Um, you know, because if you miss out 100 steps, it's not so bad. Yeah. You, can, you can do 100 more tomorrow, but you can't do that whole journey again, you know, in a week's time or a month's time. It's about, you know, just making sure that the task you've got, whether that be mental well-being or whatever, you know, you've got those steps in place and those kind of ports of call to help you through it. And maybe again, I suppose this, uh, I know there are lots of things that um, you and Ask for Jake are doing. And I, I wonder if for people who are in crisis or for people who are struggling, um, yes, there are lots of barriers to seeking support and seeking help. Um, and, you know, maybe the idea of, of going to your GP just seems far too far you know far too um a bigger goal that, mm. that actually ha- that, you know your chimp's going to put sort of lots of barriers in place for and maybe some of the, the the less formal avenues um that we've been speaking about that you've been mentioning is and, and that you guys do um is a really accessible way of doing it be that you know coming in um, or, or even just picking up the phone yourself and saying to somebody i, I need some help i need some support um no what you often find is that that starts to kind yeah. of put you on the first step of those hundred if you like or those first hundred yeah. steps and then you're then thinking about what next um and certainly um you know chimp management we've got we've got resources in terms of um the, the website i mean i'd encourage yeah. people just to um log on and have a have a look or check out our social media as well um and and, and one particular sort of area which which might people might find useful and um helpful is is a resource we call the troop yeah. So it's got um, just just various kind of videos and um, webcasts and, and, and chats about mental well-being as well yeah. and forums. And it, it, it's just another tool that people can access perhaps as one of those first steps. Yeah. And, it, and again, if, it, if it's something you do want to keep private for, for whatever reason, there are avenues out there that you can take and that are completely com- confidential. Um, you know, for a lot of people listening that, that do know me, they, they do know that my messages are open at, at any point, at any time for anyone who, who wants to chat. Um, you know, I, I will I will always reply to a message that's sent to me, um, you know, as well as the charity page. For, for a lot of people watching this, the charity links will be kind of down below or, or up above. Um, you know, we've got a team of people that are always ready to have a conversation with you if you aren't able to have one yourself. Um, you know, it's, we're never going to turn you away or anything like that. There's always someone awake at all hours of the night as well. Um, you know, so just sometimes those little steps sometimes can be the hardest, but they are sometimes the ones that are most needed and things do kind of fall into place sometimes after that um, in, in terms of a kind of mental health journey, as we call it, your kind of journey to well-being mm-hmm. um, is that those those little steps do quickly turn into big steps and, and kind of reaching out or, or reaching out to someone yourself, um, you know, can be can be the most difficult ones, but they can be the the most needed ones, um, you know. And it's it's about having those lines of open conversation that will really help change us around. Is that when people realise that it's a conversation that isn't meant to be had again in the side of an alleyway whispering, um, you know, or you know, just keep it to yourself for for. A, a journal or a diary or whatever people want you to be well people want you to be okay um and the people around you especially want that um you know so there are avenues of of help and if if kind of speaking to us at ask for jake is kind of too close to home we've got signposts everywhere um on the on the page or or through message as well for for different avenues that you can take for help and resources um because there is a lot out there currently um a lot of a lot of good work is being done not just by ourselves um, I didn't realise just how much there was until I looked at, you know, yeah, I, yeah, I there are various things, but I looked at your, your page there and there is just so much out there. Yeah, you know, there's there's a lot of things, you know, football teams, there's a lot of mental health football teams around the area, if, if that's something you like. Um, there's a lot of just mental health kind of general clubs as such that offer a range of different activities that may be suitable to you. Again, it's just taking that first step. It's going to be a daunting step. I can, you know, I can, I can admit that, um, but it will be the best step you can probably take is just making that first step because... The other steps after that are very a lot easier to take. 
So yeah, thank you for coming on, Trevor. Um, I think we're at the kind of fifty minute mark. So it's been a been a good conversation. Is there anything you want to kind of talk about or or link to as a kind of ch- not not really? I, I think I think you know it's been it's been a pleasure. Um, it's uh, it's it's just nice talking about it, I suppose. And it is, really, it, it, I think it's it's a very refreshing conversation. Sometimes um, mental health. It's a it's an issue that I think there there can sometimes be some. Even a lot of good about talking about it between between ourselves and kind of um, yeah. plans to take and things like that. It's, it's it's a conversation that's always leading to new new good avenues. So yeah, it's it's, it's, it's always good to talk to people. Thank you for coming on, Trevor. Thank you very much. It's okay. So what is the Chimp website? Um, where can people research the, the truth? Um, so if you if you if you, if you Google Chimp management, um, you'll get to our website. Um, there's uh, various uh, publications and books. So there's the um the, the chimp paradox um by professor steve peters there's also the um silent guides um which are which are two books um there's also um through the chimp management website if there are any inquiries or anything like that um you can just drop us an email um or there's through the chimp website as well there's the uh, the troop resource which is a um, an online uh, community where um steve and various members of the team um, sort of have discussion areas and discussion topics um, have webcasts and uh, sort of little videos from Steve essentially just explaining um, various aspects of mental well-being and there's a discussion forum there um, so uh, you know by all means get in touch yeah perfect so yeah thank you for coming on it's been great to talk to you thank you yeah thank you for coming on